That's it. There's no sound. Uh, <laughs> um, so for those of you who are switching over, that's that's a little bit of a difference, especially if those of you who did a lot of uh, the recorded sessions. Um, I, Chris, I kind of like the I like the notice, like when she told me, "Oh, you're being recorded now." I kind of yeah. like that little preempt. Well, and I will say we're probably not going to be recording a whole lot using Zoom, but I would actually recommend that you let people know because it is it, it, right. it can go without without a no uh, a noise, I should say, uh, without a noise. So I would let people know uh, that you were going to be recording. That's just like a good practice so that people can be ready for that. Um, that gives people a chance to turn off their cameras if they're uncomfortable or anything. Um, but yeah, so welcome to uh, Zoom. This is where we're going to be using the virtual classroom. Uh, again, I do want to thank you all for coming out tonight to be a part of the training. Um, we're going to be going over just a few bits of information. We're going to talk uh, very briefly about why we're using this and why we changed. We're going to talk about how to use this, some of the policies that we're doing and using it. Uh, and I'm also going to give you guys a chance to experience uh, something called breakout rooms, which is one of the important features of this that is the reason why we're making the change the way we are. So without further ado, um, we started this, uh, the virtual classroom stuff back in March. We had about two weeks to get everything set up and we made what we thought were some pretty good decisions. Part of the reason we chose GoToMeeting was it was really accessible on all platforms. Um, you could just click a link to get into the meetings. That was nice. And it was a little bit more secure than Zoom where there was, at, back in March, there was a whole bunch of stories about people's codes of their yeah. meetings getting out and people jumping into other people's meetings and all that. We were a little concerned that we didn't want that to happen and GoToMeeting has a way to prevent that from happening. Uh, but that doesn't really seem to be a problem anyone's talking about anymore. And we certainly never had anybody that I know of try to crash any of our go-to meetings. So uh, that made the, those benefits of go-to meeting not as important. Uh, Zoom, on the other hand, does offer a really great feature called breakout rooms that uh, makes it uh, usable in a way that's a little bit more like our traditional classroom. Uh, so that's what we're going to try to be doing with this is trying to bring this more in line with how our classroom normally works. Um, and that's really the big motivation for the change because what we're thinking is that this will not just be something that exists during COVID. Uh, there will be some aspect of the virtual classroom that we hope will continue uh, going forward. We had actually wanted to do online or distance learning in some capacity and we could never figure it out. And COVID is sort of, <laughs> you know, necessity is the mother of invention as they say. We, uh, had to try and figure some stuff out that we uh, weren't sure about before. So that's why we're changing. I know a lot of people are like, why, why switch from one to the other and all that? But, uh, but that's the basic deal of it. Um, in terms of using it, logging in is basically the same, especially if you were doing it through video. Um, it's click on a link, click on that little box at the top that says if you want to open the meeting, and then you're in. Um, the other nice thing though, is that we can actually, and we will be having the phone tutors, the teletutors come into these sessions as well. Uh, so those people will be coming in and uh, they will join this same group. If you're doing, you can control the view yourself. If you're doing the view that looks like a big Brady Bunch episode or opening title sequence right now, uh, you might see if somebody doesn't have their camera on, what happens is it's just replaced either by a picture or by their name. And so the people that call in, it'll just show their phone number uh, generally uh, until we rename them if we decide to rename them. Now, Chris, I see at yeah. the bottom of the screen, it says there's 13 participants. Yes. But, but I only count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Move your arrows. Yeah, you might just have the, uh, the, the screen set up so your pictures are a little bit bigger. Uh, oh, if, you, if you click on the side, you should be able to slide back and oh, forth yeah, yeah. or up and down, depending on how you have it oriented. So yeah. how can I do a uh, show everybody? So in the top right corner, there should be a thing to do that says speaker view or gallery view. Gallery view. Yeah, so if you tap on that, oh, it should toggle to the other, the other view. Um, so yeah, so in terms of usability, um, the, the nice thing about this, like I said, is that we can have everybody come to one place and then get grouped up by the site coordinator. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing a lot of. Uh, just wanted to give you guys 
um, a few key bits of some controls. We've already talked a little bit about the microphone and the video in the bottom left corner, but for those of you who missed that conversation at the beginning, those controls are in the bottom left, or if you're using an iPhone or an iPad, I believe they're in the top right. And if you're using an Android device, they're on the bottom of the screen. Um, so depending on what device you're using, the controls might be in a different place, but they all work the same. Tapping on the microphone will turn off the sound. Tapping on the video will turn off your video. Tapping either of them again brings you back. The other controls that you have down there, uh, Frank mentioned one of them already, and that is the participants button, which has a little number by it telling you how many people are there with you. Uh, if you click on that, you should be able to see the names that people put in. So you can see, oh, there's an Anne and there's a Mark and, and yada yada of who else is there with you. Um, if you click on the chat bubble, that allows you to send messages. So you can send a message to everyone uh, or you can send a message only to one individual. Uh, there is another really nice feature that is right here. And that's something else that we wanted to kind of show off. Um, and that is when you and a student are getting paired together, if you need some work or you need a packet, there is the ability for us to send you uh, work directly through the chat function. So if everybody can open up the chat window, what I'm gonna try to do is send everybody a very short handout. And so you should all be able to download the handout and uh, you don't have to download it right now, but you should all be able to download that and open that on your computer. Uh, it's a handout called Breaking Words into Syllables. Yeah. So did everybody get a chance to at least yep. see that? I actually don't see it. Okay. So if you chat. click on, on chat, do you see yep. where I wrote hello earlier? Right. And then below that, there should be breaking words into syllables. Do you see that? Mine's nope. to the right. Yeah, I'm sorry. Did I say to the left? I'm sorry. Yes, to the right. No, I've opened up the chat and it says hello, but it doesn't have the, um, the exercises. Oh, Thanks for well, me. let me try a second time here. Okay. For those of you who already got it, don't worry about it. If she were to hit share screen, would that uh, help you? Uh, no, that would not help for this. Uh, so Anna, I'm yeah. gonna ask you really quick, are you using an iPad or a tablet? I'm using an iPad. I okay. am too. Okay, so the functionality works a little bit on the iPad. I actually don't have that totally worked out yet about that particular aspect of it. Um, okay. I will say that if folks wanna figure out some functionality that isn't totally working, uh, we are offering that you can come in tomorrow, Thursday during the day. Uh, and Todd Seabrook will be here and myself to try and help people out with their devices if you want to bring a laptop, phone, or tablet uh, in. Uh, probably desktop computers is not practical, but any other sort of device we're glad to take a look at for you. Uh, so if that's something that uh, you want to kind of play around with uh, at the end of the meeting tonight, Anna and Sherry, uh, we can try to figure that out uh, a little bit later. Um, or like I said, we could try to have you guys come in on another day. Um, but continuing forward with some of the other features, um, Frank mentioned the share screen. That works very similar to how GoToMeeting is, where when I hit share screen, it'll give me the option to share my whole screen or just a, a very particular program. So if I click share my screen, you guys can all see what was on my screen behind my Zoom meeting. Um, I, I like to use this document here as an example. Make sure that you know what's on your screen before you hit that uh, because we have had some people that were like logged into like a bank account or something like that or you know and, and you don't want to be broadcasting that information. So just make sure anything that you don't want broadcast you've logged out of uh, before you offer to share your screen. Uh, when you're sharing your screen at the top of the screen there's a little red button that says stop sharing that you click on to return to normal. Sharing the screen is also where a really uh, good useful feature exists in Zoom. Uh, GoToMeeting had this also, but GoToMeeting had it in a different place. Um, sharing the screen is where you can use something called the virtual whiteboard. So I'm gonna switch that on really fast. 
relatively fast, I guess. It wasn't really fast. <laughs> but the whiteboard is just a big white space where you can, uh, you know, write a message or whatever. My handwriting is terrible. Sorry, everybody. Um, but uh, while I'm sharing my screen, if you all move your cursor to the top of your screen, there should be an option that says, uh, under view options, there should be annotation. And if you click on annotation, that allows you to draw on my whiteboard. So whoever's writing in blue, that's not me, that's somebody else. So uh, if you guys wanna just check that out for a second, clicking on annotation allows you to share a whiteboard with somebody else. Uh, that could be useful if you're working on a math problem with a student, I think. Um, this is actually a feature that I think is most useful if you're using a tablet or a phone. Um, one of our other tutors has something called a Wacom tablet, which is just a writing tablet for a computer. If you have something like that, if you're an art sort of person, you might have one of those. Um, but any input device that allows you to do handwriting or anything like that, uh, this would be an exceptionally useful feature. Um, with that being said, uh, with all apologies to everybody who's doing their drawings, I do have to get rid of those and we're going to go back to the regular oh training. Uh, but it looked like you guys were having a lot of fun, which hopefully <laughs> students will too. Um, <laughs> so that's great. Uh, so that's the stuff that's under sharing the screen. The other button that you should have on the bottom is reactions. And so that's where you can do things like you can have like a little hand clapping here, or you can have a thumbs up. Uh, and that's a way to have a nonverbal signal if you want to have something set up with somebody. You can say, work on the problem and give me a thumbs up when you're done or ready for the next one or something like that. Um, so again, you can use that however you want to. There's no set way to use it, but it is what's available. Those are just the basic features that we want to talk about. There is actually a whole lot of other functions this can do, but we do not really want to go too far into the woods on that. Um, so that's the basic things that we're going to be talking about today. Um, does anybody have any questions about anything we've talked about so far before I keep going? Yeah, real sure. quick. Yeah. Go, go ahead. Oh, so I guess, I don't know if this is also iPad related, but although I see the, um, the emojis at the top and chat and raise and lower hand, obviously, I also didn't see a whiteboard feature on the iPad. That should be under the share screen feature. So if you click on under share, share screen, content. Ooh, I don't. You don't have share screen, you have share content? Oh, I see it. It's under share content. Okay, then yes. So yeah, some of the devices, they put things in a little bit of a different place. So I do apologize okay. for that. Uh, but yeah, so um, yeah, good, good, good. Okay, great. Yeah, Mark? Uh, yeah, well, one, one more time. If you could just walk through that share content, annotate. Um, sure, 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 sure. So there's a, bot a button at the very bottom of the screen that says share screen. Yep. So when I click on that, it gives me an option of how I wanna share my screen. So I'm gonna click whiteboard and share. And so I initially have control over that, you know, and I can just make like a little tic-tac-toe sign or something, whatever. If you go to the very top of your screen with your mouse, yep. uh, there should be a, an options tab up there, which when you click on, one yep. of the options should say annotation or annotation. Okay. Good. And when you Thank click you. on that, that allows you to pick from the same drawing tools. Uh, there are other tools if your handwriting's terrible, like mine is terrible. Um, you can you can use the text function too, okay, um, as well. So you know what, Chris? The yeah. thing is, on the iPad, is when somebody else is writing, mm -hmm. it will not allow me to participate uh, in in drawing or annotating on the whiteboard. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, I didn't know that. Right. So um, now that people now that people have stopped, it gives me all the options. Photos, bookmark, whiteboard, Google Drive, all sorts of stuff. But when you had the whiteboard up and people were actually writing on it, then it stops me from um and says uh someone else is using this feature right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, so the, the functionality, yeah, might change depending on your device. That will be right. a little bit less complicated when you're working just one-on-one -on -one with a student, though. Because yes. it should just be you and the student right. together. Um, I but yeah, that's, a good, that's a good thing to be aware of. Yeah, Lynn. Um, so when I go to the top of my board for the whiteboard, mm -hmm. I don't have a place for um, 
for writing. I go to view, I go to edit. And and I'm on a Mac, I'm on a Mac desktop too. Okay. Um, well, so for, for, oh, there you go. You were just doing something. Or somebody just tried to share their screen. Um, so I'm going to ask actually that we hold up. Lynn, when we do the breakout rooms in just a minute, try okay. to share your screen with the person that you're in the breakout room with. Okay. And see if you can get it to work there. Because okay, for me, the whiteboard doesn't come up until I actually share my screen and take over the stuff. Okay. So, so it, I'm not sure if it'll work the same way with the Apple. So okay, we can try to Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, before I do that with the breakout rooms, there's just also a couple other things in terms of policies and how we're running this. Um, because this is something that's transitioning us into the future of how we're going to be running classes, uh, I know that a lot of you had done one-on-one -on -one video sessions or maybe table sessions that were outside of our classroom hours, but we're going to try to keep all of these lessons into the 9 to 11, 1 to 3, 6 to 8 schedule. Um, and so if you've been working with somebody regularly outside of that, what I would just do is see if you can try to maneuver that person into whatever the nearest or best uh, fit hours are in that schedule. If there's still a problem, reach out to us and let us know. But uh, so far, pretty much everybody's been able to find a good time that works for them uh, using those hours. Um, but uh, uh, again, let us know if there's something, you know, a complication or whatever that comes up. Um, the other thing is in terms of scheduling and availability, uh, you should have gotten an email from me yesterday that had a, the log thing. Um, if you haven't filled that out yet, saying when you're available. Um, what I would really recommend is that you fill out what are like the one or two sessions that you're, you're most available for, um, because we don't want um, you know, to, to put you on a time when, when you're less comfortable or something like that. We want to try and get everybody for the optimal times that they feel most comfortable for. Um, and the other thing is that we know that, especially when we got this all started, um, there have been times where people called in for teletutoring, for example, and didn't have somebody to tutor. So if that happens, what we want to do is have a policy that is a little bit different. Uh, we want whatever times you pick to be times that you can commit to week to week. So if you say, I'm here one to three on Tuesdays and Thursdays, that you really try to make sure that you're there that one to three month, uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays. But if on Tuesday you log in and in the first 20 minutes there's nobody there for you, um, then you can log off of the meeting if you would just try to stay by the phone or, or somewhere where you could answer the phone if we need you. Um, but that way you can do stuff other, other stuff around the house, you can, you can catch up on those other house projects that you haven't quite caught up on yet, um, or, or watch TV or whatever, you know, whatever, you, uh, anything on Netflix or whatever. <laughs> um, but uh, again, we don't want to keep you locked in here for the whole two hours if you're not with somebody. But we do ask that you try to stick in those first 20 minutes. And then if we don't have anybody for you, that you're just sort of on call for the rest of that time. Um, Chris, I may have missed this in your earlier email about scheduling. When's the start date? Uh, next week, so okay. next Tuesday, yeah. Next Tuesday. So uh, for you, Mark, for example, uh, that means that you and Santino will just have a different link. And when you, instead of having a one-on-one -on -one session, you'll come into a group like this. Yep. And then the site coordinator will send the two of you to a breakout room. Okay. So you guys don't have to worry about an individual email every week. You just click on the same link. Okay. Um, those links will be good for five or six weeks. Um, what we're probably going to do is have it so that they expire at the end of every month. But the one that starts next week will go through the middle of October uh, right now. Um, and, and probably when we start setting them up in the future, we'll, we'll do them in month-long blocks. Um, and then uh, I think that is it in terms of the general procedures and stuff that I wanted to talk about. Uh, one last time for any questions before we talk about like the breakout room stuff. Yeah, so what I was gonna ask you then, if there's two different types of sessions, the one-on-one -on -one and the breakout ones? There are not. There are, everybody's gonna come to the virtual classroom, teletutor, video tutor, whether you were one-on-one -on -one or table sessions before or scheduled meetings before, everybody's gonna come here and then 
there will be a site coordinator who's going to try to pair you up with a student that day. Oh, okay. And yeah. um, oh, something else I wanted to ask and I forgot. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, if you think of it, please bring it up. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, oh, Nahal? Yep. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so, and this, if this is later, just say it's later, but if we're uh, working with, if we're off in a breakup room and they huh? are working on something, do they share their screen or do we then shoot an email to say, I need blah, 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 and you'll send it to us? How does that work? Uh, that can work in a couple different ways. Uh, so if you are not sure about where, what they have or, or where they got it from or whatever, then you can ask the site coordinator and say, hey, they, this is what they've told me. Uh, you know, um, or you and the student can come out and we can try to figure out what they have and send you the work. Um, we also sent you guys access to that website that has all the links to the, the packets and all that. All the stuff that the student's working on is from there. So if you feel comfortable retrieving that on your own, we're not going to stop you from being able to retrieve that on your own either. So if you're in a breakout room with a student and they say, hey, I'm working on fractions, if you want to take a look in that fractions folder on your own, you can, or you can leave the breakout room and say to the site coordinator, hey, I need help finding this person's fractions packet, uh, and we'll help you do that. Oh, yeah, another, uh, what I was going to ask earlier, there's no, the login is just, you know, you just click on the link and then you put your name in. Yep. <clears throat> so there's no passwords, no anything like that. Yep. You guys don't have to worry about robot at Seeds of Literacy or Math Tutor or Tutor or any of those things anymore. Just click on the link and, and join the fun. So pretty much anybody can join then. Yes. To speak. I mean, somebody from the outside can join that. Uh, they could. In theory, they don't know where the link is. Right. So we would encourage. Don't share only, we would encourage you to only send Seeds of Literacy tutors or students through the link, uh, you know, for the foreseeable future, though. Okay. Um, Chris? Yep. Uh, you've mentioned Teletutor, and we are still doing a telephone tutoring? Yes or no? So everybody will be coming into this virtual class. So in order to use my telephone, I have to sign in through the computer is what I'm asking. No, I'm not. No, that's okay. not true. You can just dial in. So there is a dial in number okay. that right. just calls in. And instead of having a video, it will just, it'll be a black square with your phone number. So if, if you are a tutor who called yeah. in and a student logs in with their computer, they oh. wouldn't be able to see you because you're just on the phone. They would just see a black square okay. with your phone number. Okay. Cause but I, 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 but I, I could see that I could see their video. So, the a video and a telephone person can work together. It's just going to be audio only. And the same with the students who don't have, uh, who are not working with computers. I have That's a couple correct. of students, so they're going to just call in. So those students can just call in. Okay. And so you, a video tutor, could work with a student and you would just see, like I said, a black screen with their phone number, but you could be talking to them through your computer and they'd be hearing you on the phone. Okay, so if I just want to know so that if I have any students this week that I get connected with, I can at least give them, you know, the basics of the information. Yeah. Uh, I told them that it was changing. I did start last week telling people that it was changing, but I didn't have the, you know, the basic mm -hmm. information for them. Okay, thank you. No problem. And, and you know, on, in terms of the telephone stuff, let me just address that a little bit here extra. Um, most of the students that have been telephone tutoring are calling in to one of our staff members. In fact, you can see Melina on her video is talking to somebody, I think, getting them hooked up with somebody right now. So uh, that, that's how most of the people using the telephone tutoring are getting linked, is a student is calling into our number and then we're transferring them. So that process will be totally unchanged. They're still calling into us. We're just sending them to a different number. So the only thing that changes if, is if a student had your personal conference call number and was calling that, now they have to call a different number. That's the biggest change for the telephone side of it. Okay. I have a Sorry, question. What was that at the not, end? Not... Oh, I, if so they have your personal, if, if you had given somebody that you were working with your personal conference call number. Yes. Because you'll be in here in the virtual classroom now instead of on that conference call line, they just have to call the Zoom conference number instead of your personal conference. So I don't mean to be redundant, Chris, but yeah. 
So, because I'm, I also do tele tutoring. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to call the number. But now, do I have to also have a computer screen? No. No. And so, you know, here's here's the thing: is is you could do both the same way if you want. If if you, if you don't want to be on the phone sometimes and on the computer the other, you could do all of your tutoring the same way. It'll just be because everybody's going to be coming into the same classroom. When you call in, when you dial in, you'll be dialing into here. So I when can be. I can in, dial. I can dial in. Yeah. But I can also. I guess it would. But I could also link cut or click on the link right yeah it's either one. Oh, either one not both yeah. not both right not either both. one okay either it's, one it's whatever okay. one you which, whichever one you're more comfortable with and okay. you know if, if you're doing it on the video we can see you when we have the option to do it on the phone obviously we don't have that option that's right. totally up to you though. Mm -hmm. these are good questions any others anybody else I just wanted to make a quick comment that, uh, you know, you, you watch the nightly news and people have these call-ins, you know, they, they like this and everything. And I, I think the quality on this is pretty good compared to some, you know, big pundits and everything that call in from home. Sometimes I'm like, man, can't they get a better connection? <laughs> well, it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, I will say as somebody who was setting up conference call lines back in 2004, the quality has improved quite a bit. Yeah, but I'm talking about like yesterday, you know, people um, sometimes. It, it's pretty, yeah, the technology is pretty great. Um, so with that being said, I don't want to keep you guys here um, any later than I have to. So I want to get to our next part of the activity, which is sending you guys into breakout rooms. Um, and Melina, because of the number of participants, do you mind going into a breakout room with somebody? Great, perfect. So somebody will be in a breakout room with a staff member there. Uh, but uh, so I'm going to send you guys all into separate breakout rooms. And uh, what I would like is for you guys to come back if you can at 633. So when you're in the breakout rooms, you have to accept it. So if you're going to see a thing asking you to join, you have to click on that before it lets you go in. And then uh, if you could figure out how to get back here and leave by 633, if you're not back by 634, I will force you back. Okay. In the nicest way possible, I will. <laughs> I promise. All right. Is everybody ready? Ready. All right. Have fun, everybody. whether you'd like to access a virtual classroom using a phone call or using video, which can be done on a computer, tablet, or on a cell phone. If you're just calling in, you can dial our number 216-661-7950 during any of our class times, Monday through All right, Anna, you're back. Yep, Anna, Anna, Anna. Anna, sorry, sorry. I I decided to I decided to try it before 
before the cutoff time. That's fine. So go ahead and do whatever you were doing. Taking another bite of bagel is what I'm doing. Okay, yeah, no problem. I'm, I'm taking notes in a notebook here, so. I can go back into the breakout room if you want. <laughs> oh, no, you're fine. You're fine. Everybody should be coming back pretty soon. Okay. Yeah, Chris, I, uh, I was uh, paired with Donna, and obviously mm -hmm. I can't see Donna, and she had mute on, so I couldn't hear her either. So, But I don't know if there's someone there or not or what happened. Hey, yeah, Chris, I was by myself. Was I supposed you were to by yourself? That's not yeah. good. I was by myself, too. Really? Yeah. We were, we were by ourselves, too. I mean, the two of us, but we're in one room. We're the one <laughs> participant, you know. Well, sorry so, about that. Oh, that's because I hit the wrong button in sending you guys out. That was my mistake. We were in solitary confinement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a way you can do it where it's it's automatically send everybody in pairs or send everybody as individuals. And oh, okay. I apparently sent most people as individuals. So sorry about that. Hey, I, no like worries. I said, I, I was paired with Donna, but I couldn't see or hear because, you know, she obviously doesn't have a uh, uh, video on, you know, a camera on and, and she was on mute. So I'm not sure if she was even there. Okay, I think she's there. Yeah, she's on mute. Yeah, I had mentioned you might want to take it off. But, but so, I mean, I don't know how it worked or not, or if it did or didn't. Except I did see the block there that had her name. Well, we should only have one person who hasn't come back yet. One's lost. I always feel I apologize very for folks that I sent you alone. I did send some people alone by mistake. Sorry about that. Now I was going to ask you, are you supposed to be able to talk back and forth and generally see the person? In terms of, in terms of the breakout room, it should operate just like this, except it's one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I never had another participant. I know. I hit the wrong button when I sent people out, Jan. And so okay. I, half, of you, half of you had a partner and half of you didn't. So sorry about that. Okay. Um, but hopefully you guys, um, you know, that's what the breakout rooms are like. And again, you can uh, fiddle with all the controls and all that and all that good stuff. And um, Sorry, Chris, from inside, I forgot to, to double check, but from inside the breakout rooms, there's a way that you can contact you, for instance, yes? Um, you know, like, there's if, a way to ask for help when you're in a breakout room. There should be, yeah. You should be able to contact me through the chat, I believe. You no. can't. No, because I thought you could when I was messing around with it. And I told everyone in the Teletutor meeting last week that you could, and then later realized that you cannot, because that is not a function that Zoom has. So okay. you, you have, to, sure you have to leave. There, there may be another, oh. there may be another like SOS, uh, yeah. but the chat function does not work. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I thought you could do right. the chat. Other than just if, within the breakout room. But if, if there's it's any sort only of for the, the breakout room that you're in. Do you if want to send us sort of back problem, again and like see? This. If there's any sort of problem, you should just be able to leave and come back out of the breakout room. But right. you should also be able to, I, I did this once, there's something that you click at the bottom and I forgot to look, but there's something I think that you can click that asks for help. Um, do you want to send us back and see if sure. we can find it and we'll come right back? To, oh, I we, don't want to do we can send you guys to a breakout room for about one minute. How about that? Sounds okay. good. And I will try to do it this time. Yeah, and look look for however you ask for help from inside there. That'll be our job. Okay, I don't Let me try that. to do it this time so that everybody has a partner. I see okay. participant, I see chat, I see share screen, I see record. All right. Uh, and then Melina, I don't think you want to accept. So everybody but Melina, accept when I tell you to go to the room. Hey, you, you requested my help. Yes, at the bottom, there's a button that says ask for help. 
Great. So you click on that. You can't write to anybody, but you just invite the host. Okay, fantastic. Great. I'm going to leave the room now and go back to the other. Bye. We'll talk. Okay. Okay. Hey. Yep. I actually just was in another room and I'm, I'm bouncing across rooms. So we that can. Doesn't work. I will see you guys back in the main thing if you guys want. Okay. To come back okay. in. All right. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Hello, host. Hi guys. Good. <laughs> you found it. I've been bouncing from room to room here, so it looks like. <laughs> okay. Good. Okay. All right. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to the main room and I'll see you guys there in just a second. Okay. 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 So that's that, that's what it was. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I didn't notice it before, but it is really nice that little okay. just click on and. Did you get our request then, Chris? That we were asking. I got several people's requests. I had to bounce. I was bouncing around to about three or four different rooms. So <laughs> if everybody yeah, was hitting yeah. at the same time, I might not have seen everybody's request. But I was in at least three different rooms. So did different. you did you feel really needed? I did. I, I well, I was worried. I, I was worried that everybody was in dire trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I hit the right buttons. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be a learning experience. You know, this it's gonna is be one of those things that I'm sure the first one or two times, you know, will be not disastrous, but semi-disastrous <laughs> i hope i hope not even semi-disastrous maybe maybe okay. I, I you know i'm expecting maybe a bump or two but disastrous is a little bit more than i'm <laughs> i'm i'm looking forward to frank uh <laughs> so welcome everybody back uh, i think that's everybody no it's not anybody back. so chris to return to a um breakout room you have to yeah. set it up again right i would have to send you to another breakout room yep Mm -hmm. That's okay. correct. Yeah, but that's not hard to do. I can send you guys to another breaker room if you need to. So, okay, good, well, good. Back. All right, so now everybody's back. Um, so, just a couple other things that we want to talk about this evening. Um, want to make sure that everybody uh, is comfortable with again what the expectations are and all that. So, one other thing that uh, I really want to stress is that after you tutor with somebody uh, using the virtual classroom that you know how to log those hours um, because that data is really, really important and doing this digitally, it's really, really hard for us to keep track of attendance. Um, and this is actually a downside of Zoom. GoToMeeting had a, a way that we could go back in and double check attendance by email after a meeting was run. Zoom does not have that ability as far as I'm aware. So um, it's really, really important that you guys log hours with students after you work with them. So if um, nobody has uh, seen this in a while, I don't know. Um, but what we're going to be doing is having people, and I'll share my screen here. You'll go to our Seeds of Literacy website. We have that nice COVID warning that we actually just updated with some more information. Um, and uh, for the tutor log, if you want to get there from any part of our website, you can just go to this button that says get involved and then go down to volunteer. This is the long way around, I'll tell you, but this you can get to it from any spot on the website. Uh, scroll down and you'll see where it says become a tutor and you click on that. And when you click on that, it says COVID-19 response update closed. Click where it says COVID-19 and that will give you all the tutor resources that we have, uh, especially for this time when our classroom is closed. And the big button at the very big top, virtual classroom tutors, please log your hours. Um, so we're just asking that after you've worked with a student, you come here as soon as your session is over and just enter a couple of things. What day is it? What's your name? How long were you tutoring? How did it go? You know, were there any problems? Um, just some basic information. And that data is really crucial for us because it lets us know how many students are actually engaged with this. Are all the tutors actually getting with somebody, uh, getting paired up with somebody? Do we need to get more tutors? Can we tell some tutors that they don't need to show up? You know, that sort of stuff. Um, and it also goes to our funders. This information is stuff that we use to tell people that give us money, hey, this is really working. Um, we've had, I think, 10 graduates since uh, the COVID thing started, which 
I, I am thrilled about it. I honestly would, would have been surprised if we had just one or two graduates, but we've had 10, which is yes. so much more than I expected. And, and it's really, it's because of the hard work that you guys are doing. And I'm tremendously appreciative. We want to make sure that that work gets documented so that we can say to people, this is how well it's working. And while graduates are sort of the exciting part of that, I think you all know that a lot of the good nuts and, nuts and bolts work is just working with somebody at a third grade reading level and helping them through a reading passage or helping somebody learn how to reduce fractions for the first time. Um, yeah. So those little milestones don't show up on that big exciting, this is how many graduates we had, but it's important to us. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I was gonna ask you uh, on that, uh, that log on, login sheet that you had there, uh, yeah. you don't have to put the name of the person you tutored. It, no, it does ask for the name of the student. Yeah. So, oh, so okay. it'll ask, yeah. So if you guys want, I can, I can show you real quick. What's all yeah, I didn't see the whole thing. Yeah. So, so it's, it's, what is the date that you tutored okay. uh, your name? How long did the tutoring session go? Uh, were you on the video or telephone? We're not sure if we're going to keep asking this, but we just want to be able to see how people are using this because we're now, we used to have separate logs. So we knew who was separately doing it. Now it's all one log. Um, how many students did you work with? What were the names of those students? Is there anything that we want to know about the session? So, um, you know, did the student finish a packet? Were they doing really well? Were they having a lot of trouble? Do they need someone to check in on them? You know, anything like that. Do we need to contact you about something? So maybe you heard something troubling and you're like, Ooh, I really hope somebody contacts me because I heard something, you know, I'm not sure about. This is a good way to let us know that we should contact you right away. Um, and if so, what's the best way for us to reach you quickly? Very good. All right. So that that's the information that we're asking for. Yeah, I was going to ask again. You don't have to. You don't have to log in or a password on this either. No, this is just a link. So actually, um, I shared the link to this page in the email that you should have gotten yesterday. Okay. With the um, with the information about the the your availability and all that, so if you just want to save that link, so you can come just right here and click that button every time, make it a little make easier. It a lot easier on yourself. That's probably what I would do, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Okay, but so, just technically anybody could, you know, any Joe Blow from the street can log in and log hours and stuff. I just wanted to, is that correct? Yeah, I mean that would be sort of a weird and. I think lonely yeah. pursuit to troll our, our, our tutor log. It would be, it would be, you know, <laughs> um, but I was just curious, just curious. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, I think the thrill seekers are probably looking for something a little bit more interesting to do for the families, hopefully. So, um, yeah, Nahama. I have four questions. Yeah. Um, so we see our names. Will the students have names that appear also? Uh, that depends if so when you logged in it asked you to type your name so it's whatever you type there so if you didn't type anything you know if you just left it you know uh, especially the people who call in with the phone number you'll probably just see a phone number you won't see a name so you might have to ask them what their name is okay um, and there were times when you would like in the, in the old system You'd start mm -hmm. with someone, they'd say, I'm fine. And then you'd kind of, sometimes we would just sit and wait till somebody said that they needed us. Mm -hmm. Or you'd kind of, you'd, you'd leave them alone for a bit and go to someone else. And then does that person, if that happens online, does that happen? Or you, should you just sit there with them while they're doing their work and then they might use you or not? Like, I don't know how, how to play that out. Sure. Um, I would say that, that probably would be something I would work out with the student individually. Like if, if, if you know that there's two people that you really want to work with and, and you're comfortable, that would be something I would talk to the site coordinator about. I think for the most part, we're trying to match people up just one-on-one -on -one though. Um, so I would, I would generally just sort of sit with the one person unless you, you had some pretty strong reason that you wanted to work with more than one. Um, Sometimes they just tell you, I don't need you, or I may need yeah. you, and then you're yeah. sitting there. Yeah. At that point, I would probably say, okay, do you want me to stick around, or do you want me to leave and go back to the, the main room? And they can tell you what they're comfortable with. 
Okay. Um, if, if, if we're done say, with the student, so we go mm -hmm. back to the main room, and then do you know we're at that point? You know we're available to be reassigned. Yeah, I would just check in with the site coordinator uh, that you're coming back in. You know, when you come back in, I don't know why you're coming back in. So if you just show back up, you can say, Chris, Bill and I are done, or or Jenny and I are done working. Uh, do you have anybody else who needs help? Then we can reassign you. If you come back out, you say, Chris, I needed a packet that I didn't have. I can get you that packet. And then you can send send you back in, you know, whatever you need. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I know I usually ask for the packets and stuff just so I know what I'm working with. And, uh, and I need sometimes a refresher on whatever it is I'm tutoring. So I like those packets. And, uh, and also, I know sometimes you're working with a student and they go off and they're doing some things. So, you know, I'll have something that I'm reading or, you know, brushing up on or something in the meantime. But yeah, sometimes it's like, no, nah, they don't need any help. They're, on, they're off on their own. They just needed a prod. So Yeah, sometimes, it, and sometimes it's just a boost of confidence that is all they need to, you know. So um, you guys do a lot of good cheerleading, which makes, you know, I will say a lot of our students, when, when we talk to students in person and we ask them, why they like our program compared to others. I will say that very few of the reasons are academic. They're almost all interpersonal things like you guys are patient. The tutor, the people here are patient. Uh, the people here don't judge me or they're accepting of me, things like that. Um, people have a good sense of humor. These are the sorts of things we hear more than anything, um, honestly, is, is those interpersonal stuff. So um, I think that's, that should still be a big part of what we're doing uh, regardless of the format. So if someone, if people would show up and say, I just need to sit here and do my work. And, and they would all night do whatever they needed to do. So would they be sent to a breakout room or are they going to stay in the big room so that they can, like, how, does, how are you going to handle that? I, I think if somebody doesn't plan on working with somebody, they're probably not going to be reaching out to the virtual classroom. Got it. A lot of the people that are going to be coming in are either somebody that wants to work with somebody one-on-one -on -one, or what we've been telling students is that we don't want to move them. Right now, we don't have the ability to post task like we normally do in the classroom. So if they want to move on to like the next packet or next materials, we've been telling them that we want them to check in with a tutor um, to make sure that they've, they've got it down. So some folks might be calling in to check in to make sure that they've got the material down because they want to move on to the next packet, but we want to make sure that they, they know how to do percents before they go into pre-algebra, that they know how to you know, do the, the reading difficulty they're at now before we send them up to the next grade level. So how do we do that? Like, sorry, but like, mm -hmm. if they, um, they used to work hand packets, and so you yep. could sit and you could see it, but they, <coughs> if they hold it up, you can't really see. So how will you, how will we check and know? Yeah, um, so that would be where I would want to make sure that I had the same packet as a student. Um, and again, that would be asking the site coordinator, like if, if the student says when they first come in, I want somebody to check through these problems with me. Probably before we send you to the breakout room, we're going to want to make sure that you guys are on the same page on that. Um, if you're working with the same person over and over again, probably the one packet will, will last more than one session. But if, if you're working with somebody just for the first time, you can just ask the site coordinator and we can send it to you. Again, folks that are comfortable using the website that has all those packets available on it, uh, you can also grab the packets for yourself there. And are the answers in the back? They should be on the back for almost everything, except for practice tests and post tests. Okay. Yeah. Um, and just wondering for people who've been doing this, one of the things I really found helpful and enjoyed was like when working with people with math, and I, I know we have the, the board, the whiteboard and stuff, but it was finding things that would help them understand what fractions were and so on. A little harder when we're in this environment. Do people have ideas as to how you like the manipulate? Or if we were talking about things, I'd end up going getting that great globe because they had no idea of geography, and so they'd be reading the story and would talk about Germany. I'd show them where Germany was when we talk about it a bit. So are people doing that, or are we ignoring that because it's just a little hard? Or how do you do that? Well, I will jump in real quick before other folks jump in and say sharing your screen, it's like with the globe, for example, if you share your screen and then you can pull up a map of that area, it's not exactly the same, 
but um, you can do things by, by taking them using your computer. You can take them or show them things. I know a lot of people, the way that they would work with something like that is if I knew you were working on uh, you know, a reading packet, like let's say you were reading on a, a sixth grade reading packet, what I would do is I would share my screen and then we would go to the page that you were working on on my screen. And so the student would tell me, oh, on question number one, I think it's A. On question number two, I think it's D or something like that. Um, that's one way to do it. Um, so uh, again, I think the screen sharing is a pretty good way to try and make it a little bit better, but uh, if other people have ideas. It's a little tricky though, because normally, like I've been teletutoring since March for half a year now, because we each have our own screens and um, that way I can kind of quick nip down to the end, check out the answers, nip back up on my, on my own at my own discretion, kind of. Yeah. So that's a challenge. Yeah. And this is- Do it on your phone. Maybe I, that was what I was going to say. It sort of implies that you need two screens up. Um, ideally. Yeah, this, admittedly, a lot of this stuff is, is a little bit more of a challenge. Um, hey, Chris, I gotta check out. Okay, thank you, Mark. Thank you. Bye -bye. Um, I'll share one other real quick tip. This is a very cheesy, cheesy thing. I'm just going to warn you guys. We're all um, ears. <laughs> but I had a teacher back in high school who had a portable whiteboard that they used. Um, and I don't know if everybody has one, but if you don't have one, you can just use a clipboard with paper, white paper clipped to it. If you don't have a whiteboard at home. Um, but a very cheesy thing for, for understanding balancing fractions. I would have a, a, I had a teacher who he would write the equation and he would make sure the equal sign was in the middle. And if he added something to one side before he added it to the other, he would, okay, now that side's heavier. <laughs> but he subtracted something, he'd be like, oh, that side got a little lighter. And it's, you know, a cheesy visual thing to try and make it real. Um, I, I say try, try anything, see what sticks, see what works, you know. Um, no, Chris I don't know if I'm the only one, but remember, I don't know if you remember the last time we were doing one of these, yours came in backwards for me. Did anybody else see what he was holding up the backwards, or is it just for some reason me? Well, oh, that one's good. That's good. Okay, no, it's good. Remember, remember when, remember how it was looking back? I don't know. Never mind. Moot point at this point. <laughs> I don't remember, but I don't doubt that you're right. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't actually remember that. No, there's, there's, um, that could happen to you. There's mirror, like it comes in mirror, and there's something in the video settings that you can change. Uh, that so if I, I just went to the, my video thing on the bottom left, and that little carrot up to the top to video settings, and on the right side it says I can mirror my video, mm -hmm. which does that it either reverses you or unreverses you. Yeah, if you're willing to go into those video settings, there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can do, I will tell you. Uh, you can have it so that you have a Hawaiian beach background if you want, and you can do all sorts of you know, fun things as well. Um, that looks correct yeah. to me, Frank. That looks um, correct? Yeah, it looks yeah. correct. Now see, on so, my screen, it's backwards when I look at my own, but I see the mirror of my video. So uh, yeah. just out of curiosity, let me, Click off. Now it's okay. Does it look okay for you? Looks okay for us. Yeah. Okay. So now, yeah, it was mirror my video. You're right now. I'm cool. Okay. <laughs> um, and then somebody just asked in the chat. Well, Lynn asked in the chat. Uh, will we get a new link for tutoring next week? Um, so um, I can definitely make sure that the link gets sent out to everybody uh, at the beginning of the week. I'll send that out to the same list that I sent uh, the, the log to. So as long as you got the, the email about the log yesterday, you should be on that list to get uh, any future updates from me. Um, I will also say that on our website, there the, the link will always be the up-to-date one there. So that will be always be posted there on the website. And especially for this first one, I'll make sure that the link gets emailed to everybody. Um, the, the person who is going to be doing a lot of this in the foreseeable future uh, in the evening will be Melina, who has been with us tonight. 
Uh, so hope, if you've tutored in the evening, you've probably spoken to her or chatted with her over video before. Uh, during the day, it'll be a gentleman named Todd Seabrook. Uh, I'll be around for the first few weeks getting all this started, um, but we actually are hoping to get students coming in to reassess, to, to get the ball rolling on reopening the classroom by the end of the year, is the knock on wood hope. Um, Chris, how do you do yeah. the reading fluency, the fluency tests? You guys are going to do those there, or? We've been doing those over the phone with new students. Okay. Um, so if you're interested in doing those, uh, I would talk to Carmen Stewart. Okay. Call in and talk to Carmen because uh, A, she's always looking for more people to help with that. Uh, and probably we want to be doing some follow-up on people that uh, haven't gotten followed up on. We're really behind on reassessments and checking up on people um, across the board. So. Uh, any help with that stuff is greatly appreciated. Good, good, good. Um, I do want to say if there's any other questions, I'm available for those. Also, uh, I want to leave this open for a little bit. If anybody wants to play around with some of the options, like trying to share their screen or anything like that, I want to make sure I leave this open uh, so you guys have a little bit of time to do that. Um, so does anybody else have any questions while I'm here? I do. I don't know if everyone else needs to hear it though. So. Okay. Okay. I mean, so, so if people want to, whatever, it's nothing's private. Um, it would help me if the coordinators would put their names on their screens. Mm -hmm. Like even when I was in, in person and somebody else would show up and go like, Oh, who the heck is that? So, uh, it would help me to have your names. I don't know how, how then you change what you have is whatever. It just help me to have names. Uh, I will, I will, I will let everybody know. Okay, that's one. And the other one is, um, I know you asked for consistent days. One of the things that helped me volunteer was because my work sometimes switches to different days. Is that yeah. if I couldn't really make it on a Tuesday, I could come in on a Thursday. Right. So is that still possible, or you really want us to? It, it is possible. We we'd like anybody who can stick to a consistent schedule to do that. So we have that baseline. Of, of consistent expectations, but then we know that some people, their schedule does change and float around a little bit. Um, and so I, I don't, I, I'm speaking for myself here, I can't speak for Melina or Todd, but I would never be begrudge the help if you came to offer it on any night that you came in. So I would, I would always be glad to see another, another helpful face. So Chris, what you're saying is we can just, you know, join when we need then, and then you'll assign us. That's basically the way that'll work. So it's going to be based on who's there, you know, each night. Again, right. what we would like to do is have a schedule yeah. that is consistent as possible from week to week. So for those of you that can pick a day and stick to that day, that is very helpful. Um, however, it is also helpful to have extra hands sometimes too. So uh, again, if, if, if you're not able to commit to a day, that's okay. We ask that if you can commit to a day that you do that. Okay. Yeah, because I'm at least for starting out, I probably won't be able to commit to a day. Mm -hmm. but, you know, once things get going, I might be able to. So at this point, what I should do, like I like to do one to three, so I should at some point just join when I'm available then. Um let me get back to you on that, Frank. Okay. <laughs> You can give Let me, me a get back to you. I, I don't want to speak for everybody else when I don't, you know, that, that's, a, this is kind of a group decision. And again, I'm not going to be the one running this rodeo for forever. So okay. uh, I probably want to talk to Todd about exactly how he wants to handle that. Uh, okay. During that time. okay. Uh, and if anybody's interested in the, in the evening, Melina is the one, Melina is the one that will be handling that. I'm on a different place probably on everybody's screen, but for me, she's over there. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so um, but so I, I would ask Melina what her preferences are in the evenings. Okay. Giving them now, I would say if you want to hop in, that's that's great. But yeah, we do. We need to kind of know as much as possible, just like Chris is saying, um, if people can try to stick to a consistent schedule. And we also, I mean, for those of you who have been consistently tutoring. We're hoping that this makes it a lot easier for students to join. 
but we don't think that there's necessarily going to be like a crush of students immediately. So, um, you know, it might not yeah, be like in the classroom. The similar starting off. Yeah. And then we're hoping to grow from where we are right now. And at one point you took names, no one ever called, but like, there were times where I said, because I'd come in on a day and nobody was there, but the night before you were crushed. And, right. and I'm happy to be called to see whether or not I can be helpful. So I don't know if you're going to collect names like that also. Um, just, could you send me an that. email telling me that so that I can, I can have like a written thought thing saying that? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good idea, actually. You know, for people that, you know, like just say um, open and if I'm available, I can do it. And if you need me, call. that's, you know, that could be, that could work out well too. I don't know. Might not work out well from the coordinator's perspective. Well, well again, it, it, you know, like I said, if, if, if that's your situation, please send, uh, send me an email just so that I, I can, I can get back to you. I, I can A, talk to the other coordinators and, and, and we can put something together and figure something out. Um, and we can then reach out to you guys and let us know, you know, a little bit better what our system's going to be. And again, we're still, you know, this is a pretty big changeover of how we're doing it. So it might take a few weeks to get everything all totally smoothed in and put together. So Chris, mm -hmm. like I signed up for Thursday from one to three. If yep. for some reason I can't make it, do you want yeah. me, to, do you want me to let you know in advance? It's always nice to know in advance if you're not going to be able to make it. Yeah, it, it, it's helpful to know, you know, just a, a text or an email or a phone message is, is more than enough to say, hey, won't be here this Thursday. Okay. That's fine. Uh, on that note, these are some of these questions are like frequently asked questions. It might be helpful to have this as a document for those of us who do sign up to continue with um, this kind of tutoring, like what to do in the instance of, or what the protocols are, like are we expected to have our first and last name on our screens, or just the first name? Um, and because the students, yeah, the students like, for, for, for the teletutoring hours, we're expected to write the first and last name of the students, so that should be probably the first thing we ask them is their full name and the spelling of it. Yeah, that, that would probably be a good idea. Yeah, I agree. Um, in terms of putting together like an FAQ, that, that's actually a very good idea. Um, I think we had an FAQ already for some of the other types of tutoring that was on the website. Uh, I can right. see if some of these topics are already covered there and if they're not added to that and, and updated for, for all of this. Mm -hmm. the, the FAQ that already exists um, is on that same page where you where Chris showed you how to access the, uh, the teletutor log. Or excuse me, the tutor log. For this sort of tutoring? For this Can kind of tutoring? That? It was for both video and for teletutoring. So oh, there are likely of, things a lot we of these need questions. To add. Yeah, we can add stuff now because things have changed a little bit. There's probably stuff we have to add, but yeah. And right now, are there days or times where you anticipate that you need more people than others? Or not yet? Um, I honestly don't know. I'm, I'm waiting to see what it looks like as people fill in their availability. Um, I will say that in my experience on the previous system, Tuesdays and Thursday mornings, more students wanted to work and more tutors wanted to tutor. And that just sort of weirdly naturally happened. Um, but I don't know how that reflects with teletutoring and, and people's availability kind of shifts over time. So, um, that's also why we're asking everybody to give us this information again, which I know some of you have had to fill it out a couple of times before, um, is because we want to make sure that the information is as up to date as possible. So uh, what I plan to do is send out a schedule on Friday. I'm going to Thursday evening after everybody's turned, hopefully everybody's turned it in. <laughs> I'm going to try to spend most of my Friday making a schedule and send it out to folks so people can take a look at it. Um, and, and then I might reach out to folks. So for example, if you and Frank had said like, oh, you know, I'm available most nights, but I don't have a particular yada yada. Uh, I might reach out and say, do you think you'd be available, you know, Monday night or something like that? For those who had said they were available those extra times. I 
I could go on and on with questions. It's just, I, I know it's getting late, but to what extent do you want us to log um, the progress we're making with a student? And because I've been working with somebody quite intensely one-to-one -one for the past six months, it's a little different because I have to go into some depth because she's, you know, taking the exam next week, like in this instance. But with new students, how, just how much feedback do you want? Um, like the name of the packet, like, because when we were in person, we had folders, for instance. Yeah. Um, like I've been keeping a notebook with, for my student. I've actually filled this notebook with my notes because otherwise I wouldn't know which packets she's worked on, to what extent, where she's at, what she's scoring, if she's able to go on to the next packets, if she's ready for the exam. Yeah, I, I generally need to know, um, A, what did you guys work on? That's, that's the first thing. You know, okay. um, B, are, are there other things that you thought were, were important that should be shared with the site coordinator that the, that the organization should know? Um, you know, if you're working on the student and they're making good progress, that's fantastic. Um, if they specifically really need help with, you know, a certain thing, that's really more useful to, to tell us specifically what extra help they need or, um, you know, were, were there things that um, you noticed that, again, would be pertinent to be shared either with the next tutor or that the site coordinator might be able to offer some extra help, insight, or support for? Well, so then do you want, like, fractions 2.3 reasonably good? Or, I yes, mean, how I is mean, the continuity kind of going to work with, with, the, with tapping back into the folders and the students' progress from your end, like how, how useful, uh, we want to be useful. Yes, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. How it's going to tie into the student folders when we reopen is a question we have not figured out yet. Okay, fair enough. So fair enough. This is uh, huge. That, is, that is a gigantic question mark over this. Um, okay. So I, I, I don't have a full answer for you on that, to be totally honest with you. Just let um, us know how, how um, how our notes can be useful. I don't know how to phrase this. Like, yeah. Well, again, is it is it something that, you know, if I, like let's say Melina and I are working together, you know, if if I notice that she's having trouble with fractions, but that's just because we're, you know, it's it's part of the normal course of tutoring. Maybe you don't need to note that. But if she's having trouble with something, or I'm having trouble with fractions, and you think, oh, this person really needs extra help on reducing fractions. They didn't pick that up from the previous packet. That's something that I would, I would write down. Right. Um, Melina, you unmuted yourself. Did you have anything? No, I was just, yeah, I mean, I, I keep a pretty close eye on the tutor log and that's, you know, this has been one of the questions um, that's included there. And it is, it's really helpful to, when people say things like, you know, either doing really well, I mean, there've been comments that are kind of like, this seems too easy for her. That's great to know. Or um, you know, needs more help on, on rounding. Really struggled with that, and you know, didn't quite get it by the by the end of our session. That's that's really great to know. And if you can't, when people call to check in, if you can kind of, that's what we're trying to determine is is how they're doing. So it's not so much you know asking for just answers to the questions, but kind of right. probing and saying you know how did you find this answer, or can you can you can you walk me through number four? Not that you have to do that for every single thing in the packet, but um, yeah if you do that and can kind of say, yep, you know, she checked in, but she's good to move on to the next packet. That's, that's what we need to know. Okay. Any other questions anybody has? Good for okay, now. so I'm gonna leave this open then for, for a little bit. Um, uh, I'm gonna wrap up a couple things in the office here and I'm just gonna kind of leave the meeting open. And if anybody wants to uh, play around sharing their screen or anything like that, you're more than welcome to do so. Uh, if you do have another urgent question or anything, I'll be popping back on and off for the next uh, 10 or 15 minutes or so. Okay. All right, thank you. And thank thank you. you so much thank all you, for coming. Chris. Appreciate it. A lot. Um, and uh, hope to see you in the virtual classroom. The new <laughs> okay. Bye, Chris. Goodbye. Bye. Good night. Let's see if we can. <laughs>